It is Tuesday, rawmikerichards.com, broadcasting live from the DKI studios in downtown Toronto, 234 King Street East, out of the Pacific Junction Hotel. So, an abbreviated show, as we're still dealing with connectivity issues. It's a real pain in the ass. This is the part of this industry that I hate. Also, how much we hate losing bets. Although I think a lot of people probably won on Sunday. And then now the strangeness of the world in the NFL. Where was Butler? Where's Butler? And what about these issues with uh, Gronk? These insinuations of not being there. Is it even conceivable that Rob Gronkowski isn't going to be a Patriot? And if you're in the market of picking up a, a Gronk, where's the best place he could go and just how much are you willing to pay? And by willing to pay, I mean, are we talking first-rounders, players? Because how much longer do you think he's playing? The Maple Leafs get into uh, an old-fashioned uh, sort of shootout, 7-4 the final over Anaheim. Curtis McElhenney. The Leafs' future. Well, maybe maybe not, but he, may, he might be the immediate future because uh, Frederick Anderson taking the uh, everybody was kung fu fighting skate to the head. He got a little, uh, he got Derek Sanderson. Is that even a thing? We'll talk about that and all the Philadelphia mess in their city. So, uh, Dave, we're taking a look at uh, a lot of things. Obviously, we're, we're a couple of days behind on, on, on our take, basically on the – it's like almost four days later. But the reality is in watching that game, my my takeaway, aside from maybe if a bet didn't come through, Deion Lewis, that was thoroughly one of the most entertaining things I've ever seen. And, and, and for Doug Peterson, uh, if that is just a reflection of just how good a coach he is, uh, that thing – if the if the Super Bowl were like that every year, that would stop a lot of people from saying, "Well, you know, the Grey Cup is the the best championship uh, of all time," and it usually does end up being pretty crazy. The Grey Cup has had that reputation. Yep. But I got to tell you, if you didn't enjoy that thing, because that you don't like football, that, then that was crazy. Yeah. I I I loved it, and the outcome. Philadelphia was the better team that day. They were the better coached team. They they did everything that they needed to do. And, again, I think it's a reflection of the coach and for uh, Nick Foles. Well, now what? Now what do you do? Yeah, no, that's exactly it. No, that, that game in a nutshell was one of the best games I've seen. Uh, I, surprisingly, uh, you know, it's because I – it's funny. It's You know, you talk about in-game betting on sportsinteraction.com. When, when the Eagles went up late on the Zach Ertz touchdown, which was nice to see that it was reviewed and properly – actually uh, uh, spoken through the referee that the receiver turned into a runner, therefore it's a touchdown. Like Referees across the NFL could probably learn a lot from uh, what was Gene Zatori or whatever his name was, the head referee in that game. Here's the thing. Tom Brady has that ball on the 20-yard line, and in-game, I bet at that time Patriots money line at 255. <laughs> Because during the entire game, and if you even opened up uh, at two at one fifty, so I got a full full dollars worth on the bet. So at two fifty five, Patriots. I'm thinking Tom Brady writes himself another historic comeback. Obviously, that never happened, but it still made it pretty exciting. And yeah, you know, I I can't sit there and and, and blame play calling on the Patriots. I, I I think the only thing they did wrong was. Maybe they never made enough plays on defense, which to me wasn't overly surprising because it wasn't a very good defense to begin with. Right, right. Uh, Tom Brady throws for over 500 yards, but I'll still sit there and say, you never utilized your backs as much as I thought you'd utilize it. Deion yeah, Lewis. 
Deion Lewis. Well, that's well, that's the thing that bugged me. You know, it just yeah. I don't know. Like Bill Belichick comes across as trying. You know, well, he always has been this way to me, anyway. Trying to be smarter than the other guy, even though he's already a smart guy. Like you know, like he's he's at the pedestal of maybe the greatest head coach in the history of the NFL. But for some reason, you think he, he, he needs to prove on a, on a game by game basis that he's smarter than everybody else. That's exactly it. I don't get it. Like Dion Lewis was such a valuable addition to your team during the playoffs, during the during the stretch drive, uh, when you got yourself out of a little bit of a funk during the regular season, and then you totally shy away from him in the biggest game of the season. I I, I, I don't understand it. That's why I looked at Dion Lewis going, Yeah, you know what? The guy should catch six or seven balls out of the backfield easy. That's why I tweeted was he cut? And, yeah, <laughs> and they didn't use him at all. And you know, speaking of guys that you know it's funny too. Deion Lewis is a free agent now, well, as soon as the contract yeah. expires, not used. Malcolm Butler is a free agent now, not used. I'm just, you know what I mean? It's almost like they, they were sent off to pasture before they even should have been. Well, and, uh, Malcolm Butler's talking that way because he said after the game, basically, that the Patriots gave up on him. He's a huge piece yes. of, of a defense that, once again, isn't exactly, it's not intimidating. But when you have a guy who played... By the numbers, it's like 97.8 of the plays Malcolm Butler played on. And then when they said, uh, or they, when Bill Belichick said, uh, we put the players in game plan out there that we thought would be the best. So you're saying that the best plan was to take your best player in that position who played almost 100% of, your, of, your, of the downs that not having him somehow was a game plan. Yeah. Don't, I don't. I mean, don't you, you just can't even buy into that. And, and and as as you know, the Patriots are not afraid of necessarily getting rid of pieces that even substantial ones, players with with big names, players with great years. But if players want more money, if players make a demand of more playing time, if players, I mean, there's a bunch of things that happen with the New England Patriots that only happen, quite honestly, on a consistent on a consistent basis. That is New England. It it's one of the things that has made them one of the great franchises uh, of of probably of my lifetime. I really haven't seen you know when you're sitting there talking about how good was this team. Well, normally when you talk about championships, you might have to go back to so the Montreal Canadiens and somehow okay this is a big stretch. Montreal Canadiens get to stand like a final, and you have to make a comparison to other teams. Well, you have to go back to you have to go back thirty years. You have to go back forty years. Well, for me, it's the Edmonton yeah. Oilers right. of the eighties, or the New York Islanders uh, so, of the eighties. So let's say yeah. that. Say that. But but you still have to go back 30, 40 years for that kind of dominance. Yes. This team was comparing itself to each other year and all the years in the last in the last decade that they've always been to the to the to the dance. Like there really is to me no legitimate comparison unless you, you want to go back into the twenties and the thirties and the forties. Well, to me, I mean, it was such a different game. I mean. The helmets were leather. I mean, it, it looked like rugby to a degree. These guys, uh, it, it is it is not a, I don't like the generational comparisons because I think even things like equipment, the number of teams in your league, players, uh, physical abilities, you know, as I said, equipment, it, it, it really isn't that kind of comparison. But the Patriots are so good. They can go back to the previous year or the year before that or the year before that. So this team that they put in the Super Bowl, was of all those teams, Maybe the weakest team they had, yep. which which for some uh, might seem insulting, but for others, uh, and someone like myself, it's remarkable that we can even do that. And if you want to add another chapter to the, what you just said there, which totally makes sense for the 2018 season, they're already five to one favorites to win the Super Bowl next. Year. See, that's that is just mind boggling. So, uh, because I think the Eagles are going to be very good again. Eagles, Eagles are right up there too. Actually, they're predicting, which really isn't a huge surprise because a lot of times. The two Super Bowl finalists will be, uh, I guess, the favorites next year. Uh, the Eagles at six to one, the Steelers at eight to one, the Packers, believe it or not, with the Vikings at twelve to one. And I've already put down a futures bet, futures bet on the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> already, you're, you're there already. Sixteen to one, yeah, at sixteen to one, because it, I love what they have on offense. Drew Brees will get signed. Okay, so what? Okay. These kids are looking good on defense. Okay, I, David Bastel, Saint, Saint, Saints lover. Yeah, I am a Saints lover. What happened to Jimmy Garoppolo? Saints. What happened oh, to that love? Oh, I take, don't get me wrong. I still love Jimmy Garoppolo, <laughs> okay. but I'm here to win money. Okay. Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy Garoppolo could lead. I'm not going to say will lead. Could lead the 49ers to a playoff spot. If you're the New Orleans Saints and you had the chance to get Gronk, 
So Gronk, so so Breeze to Gronk. Yes. How much are you willing to give up to get him, and is it going to be worth it? If you legitimately had a chance as the Saints, and all of a sudden I would Rob give up, I would give up a first round draft pick for for Gronkowski just because uh, the Saints are drafting between. 23 and 30 so it's not a high first but it's still a first and it's also Gronk which means he's not going to play 16 games next season but I honestly think I would do it I would do it I honestly think that if Drew Brees this past year that we saw still had a Jimmy Graham type receiver that he did have at one time because Jimmy Graham by the way uh, the Seahawk Jimmy Graham is not even close to no, being I don't what like he the, was with the Saints. I don't like the if, hey, look. You know I have no love for the Seahawks, but I'm looking at that move and whoever ended up in Seattle. I don't know if it's the same guy who, who played in New Orleans. Yeah, I don't no, know. No, it's completely yeah. different because Jimmy Graham was a weapon in New Orleans, and and I I think Gronk would look great there. I don't think Gronk's going anywhere, by the way, so if you're sitting there going, where's Gronk going? I don't think any of the big three are going. I don't think the coach is going anywhere. We know the quarterback isn't going anywhere, and I don't think Gronk is going anywhere, but if we're playing This is blue sky. Yes, that's correct. Gronk would look fantastic in gold and black. Yeah, I can't see. I mean, of all the pieces, and look, the catch he made in the corner of that end zone, Yep, the quality of what that guy's worth, and you know, we we kid around about you know sort of what he's about. Michelle Ryan said, you know what, uh, you know he's the ultimate frat boy. That's right. Maybe he's been in porn. We just don't know it. Maybe he was wearing a clown mask or right. <laughs> sunglasses. Who knows? Good gig if you can get it, he, right, Russell. He, he could get it. But I got to tell you that that uh, to me uh, that quality. But still, uh, I'm looking at uh, a Philadelphia fan base who have been starved for it. I mean, you know, if you haven't seen Invincible the movie. Good movie. With Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. That movie's fantastic. Kind of a short receiver, but uh, hey, why but not? Because he's shorter than, than actually Vince yes. Papali. You can go in the, you can see actually those two guys talking. Vince Papali goes, honestly, did you even know who I was before this whole thing came up? Did you even did you even know? Because you can see Vince Papali play. He's, it's a different body type. He's a, he's a taller guy. Yeah. He's, he's, and he's a leaner guy. Yeah. But it doesn't take away from some of the football footage, including there's one where Mark Wahlberg – and of course, it's special teams. He's on special teams, so he's running down that lane. He's got to go against other guys who are trying to beat him down the field. And he, in that movie, one time just gets destroyed and getting hit out of bounds. And it was him. Like Mark did all that. Wahlberg did. All that. See, I like Mark Wahlberg. I'm a fan. He got. He said <laughs> the, the, the hits they put on him, and especially that one. Um, that took him out. Yeah. That took him out. Well, it's funny because when they when they have these type of football movies or hockey movies, baseball movies, all the extras are usually guys yeah. that have played semi pro at minimum. And some are better at making it look real than the others, well, and that's sure. why most sports movies I look at it and I just cringe. Some like, of it is cringe. And almost a hundred percent of the hockey stuff, you, you, I can't even watch it. Now lately they got better. I never saw. Um, that Alaska one was that stupid? Um, was the, uh, Russell Crowe, uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. See, because I never saw that. Yeah, thing. it was the whole premise of it of the New York Ranger scouts going to Alaska yeah. and bringing up this unknown to. I liked Miracle. I thought Miracle, Miracle was really good. Was one of my favorite yeah. sports movies yeah. ever. And, and 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 Kurt Russell, for my yeah, money, was great. was was hair on your back, yes. tingling with yes. some of the speeches and the way. Oh, it's, it's I'm. And it's funny because we're Canadians and we're proud Canadians, but that 1980 uh, Miracle on Ice Team USA team is one of my favorite stories that I've researched. I've looked up. I've talked to Jim Craig, Dave Christian of the Winnipeg Jets, Neil Broughton, guys like that, Kenny Morrow, who won a Stanley Cup a couple months later with the New York Islanders. Yeah, that's a great story, It's a fantastic story. I even remember talking to Herb Brooks once when he was with the Pittsburgh Penguins at the time. Rest in peace, by the way. Uh, and uh, and just, just seeing Herb Brooks, it was like, wow, Herb Brooks. And, and you know, he never quite had that same no. same NHL Herb Brooks than he did with the with the juniors and with the Olympic program. It wasn't the same guy. It's so hard to have that magic all the time. Um, you know, Paul Henderson in that series, in the last four games for Team Canada, was the best player on that team. The best player. Remember who's on that team. Paul Henderson was the best player. And that's for that moment, that's what he had. Bingo. He wasn't going to be that in the NHL. He wasn't that with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Nope. He would be very honest about that. Mike Ruzioni was one of the consultants on that. On that, and I believe he was the captain, was he not? He was team? the captain of the team. Yeah. He said, so I, 
I had a chance to talk to him, and he maybe it was on our show. I can't remember, but I, I said, so. I mean, the question is because you lived it, because that Herb Brooks character that you got to, now it's Kurt Russell. You know, it's kind of one of the the handsome. You know, he's been around for nine hundred years. Everybody knows Kurt Russell movies. He's great in all of them. But now he's got to be this monumental, almost historic figure in USA uh, sport lore. How close did he get? Like to you? He goes. There were times where he had to remind himself that it wasn't Herb. Yeah. And to me, that... Ultimate compliment. What else do you need to hear uh, after Bingo. that? I mean, that to me was uh, incredible. Uh, our friend our friend, actually, Dennis Marouk, he actually was coached by Herb Brooks with the Minnesota North Stars. I remember talking to Dennis oh, about... Oh, yeah. And see, that's yeah. another thing. I, when I, when, as soon as I looked that up, one of the first questions I ask him is, tell me more about Herb Brooks. And boom. It's, yeah, it's, just, it is legendary. Things, yeah. It is legendary. Uh, also legendary, f- the... Uh, <laughs> The Philadelphia Eagles fans. Oh, jeez. Now, because we have no ability to show clips, we'll have to show pictures. Kind we'll of sucks. Back. We'll be back with our regular video later on in the week. Yeah, Don't tomorrow. worry. Now, I, I've been excited over certain wins in my lifetime, either ones that I had uh, personally or for teams that I follow when they actually win a championship. It, it is a crazy feeling because you feel a little dizzy. Now, maybe you have had some cocktails. Football tends to lend itself that way. Yep. But as excited as I could be, probably the last thing I'm thinking to show my love and my dedication to that franchise <laughs> is getting on all fours, bending down on the road, and eating horse shit. It's the last thing really that will cross my mind as Dave and I are crawling to the bar. We're hugging each other. We're so happy. We're such huge fans. I go, you know what, Dave? I'm going to eat horse poo. I'm so happy. And Dave goes, that's a great idea. <laughs> that's tremendous. Show that picture again. This Again, uh, I can't believe we don't have the vi- videos to show you today because the people are all chanting and cheering. I've worked on a farm. This I've seen so, it up this close. Is so gross. I've smelled. Or, and never would it crystallize in my brain that this is the way that I show excitement. I'm glad I'm glad you've expressed that to me yeah. because I would have second like, thoughts about you. <laughs> hey, look, look, it's uh, it's it's uh, uh, Pospisil has just won Wimbledon. He has. Where's the horse shit? Because I am eating it. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should say if he won Wimbledon, I think maybe that's the vego. You just said if Pospisil uh, wins uh, uh, Wimbledon, you have to eat horse shit. Uh, Actually, he's. The, I'll be honest. He meant it this year. He's, <laughs> Only he's the one tennis player. That I'd like. Yeah, it's He true. came on our show, and I'm like... He's very good. I said, you remember, I, I've been calling you Popsicle uh, for the last couple of years because I'm not a friend of tennis. Tennis and I don't talk. I'm not interested in tennis. Tennis is that the girl that kind of would like to go out with you in high school, and you're like, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. But you seem nice. See ya. I'm just saying. It's kind of how it is. But my God, the pictures that we've seen... Uh, then you see the aftermath. What, by the way, what, by, what is the 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 infatuation with climbing up on uh, traffic lights? Don't I don't get it. I, I want to know not only that, but what's the infatu- infatuation of burning down your city after a championship game? You you know you live in that city, and you're gonna have you know like like if you're in your house and you start smashing stuff, you're gonna have to clean it up eventually, right? I mean, it's your place. You I've, live there. I've never got the championship riot. I've never understood the mentality in the championship, let's burn down a couple of places and smash windows. Now, are these people just jerks and losers anyways? Yeah, for the most part. And there were, I don't know how many tens of thousands or maybe, who was it, 100,000, whatever that number was. For the most part, even still by percentage, it is a smaller percentage that actually does that stuff. But I will say in the, the stuff that I've seen, and again, you can say this almost about every fan base, every fan base, the Philadelphia Eagles fans go mental. Like their reputation, I know, is bad. Just ask Santa Claus. Yep. We, 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 we know what happened there. But the, some of the footage that I saw, and these guys are young, by the way. This is not like it's a, a 40-year-old guy or, or you know what I mean? The, the, these are like, like 20-somethings that just were annoying. It, going into the, uh, into the stadium, what they were chanting, what they're doing, if, if it's my son, hmm. And it would never be Jordan, by the way. No, it wouldn't. But if I saw my son acting the way they did, I'm telling you right now, I'm saying, 
for one year, you're out of the family. <laughs> no, no birthdays. There'll be no Christmas for you. That's a pretty good suspension. There's no money. For one year. Nice job, Coley. Mike Richards, not your son, or not your father. <laughs> you are, you are, you are cut. One year suspension. One year suspension from family. Ooh. Because it's disgusting. If my son ever acted like that. Yeah, I know. There was even guys walking around with Glocks. Maybe we'll show that uh, 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 tomorrow. But I just look at it and think, of all the crazy stuff that I've done, hmm. like, would you jump up and pull down a stop sign? Yeah, because when you're, you're stupid when sure, you're young, yeah. you, you do something weird. Yeah, I'd probably want to you know, pull down the stop sign and take it off to keep the stop sign itself as a memento. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually a pretty good idea. I don't think you can argue with that kind of logic right there. Am I happy that Philadelphia won? Yeah, because I'll go back to what I think is great about sport. Sport is the one thing, and this is why they make movies about it, the guy who's down and out. The guy, so if you're Nick Foles, a couple of years ago, he's like, I'm not playing anymore. Mm. I'm going to be out of the league. I'm bouncing around. No one really thinks I'm any good. Like, And the game he has, he, he is the MVP <laughs> yeah. over – a Tom Brady who throws for 500 yards. Greatest quarterback ever. Yeah, and you beat him. You beat him straight up. Go, Hey, going back to the, the street signs and stuff like that, I, I just thought of this. A uh, friend of ours, Scott Coe, former Stampede. Oh, former no. Former Manitoba Bison. Yeah, I know Scotty. Scott <laughs> Coe, uh, after after the Bisons and head coach Brian Doby, one of my favorites uh, that I used to play under as well, uh, after they won the Vanier Cup, they went yeah, by the way, coming out of nowhere. Coming out of nowhere. Nowhere. They go to a little area in, I believe it's uh, the Maples area in Winnipeg, and there's a street corner of Vanier Drive and another intersection. There's the picture of Scott Go screwing off the actual sign and holding it over his head. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, but Vanier, as yeah. soon as you win a Vanier yeah. Cup, yeah. Hey, I, I say I'm blind eyeing that one. As long as you don't damage anything else. And you eventually replace the sign. I think Adonijay was on that team, wasn't yes, he? he was. Is he Adonijay, yeah. Okay, here's the thing about Scott Coe. And I know he's probably going to go, don't do it. Don't say it. <laughs> it was world famous, Scott. Scott was a very good person to be around. And Gassy. He could empty. <laughs> he could empty a keg restaurant in a matter of minutes. People would think that they were actually burning human flesh in the kitchen. Because of Keg, I'm not saying you do. I'm not saying you serve humans. Nope. But what I'm saying is We're fans of the keg. Once he got once it got in him, really? I've seen people go, Oh my in a bar, you know how packed bars are and the girls are they're dancing. And I've seen girls go, Oh God. What is that? And he's nine hundred feet away and he's doing this. Wow. <laughs> it's like one of the fantastic four. Oh well he is. Part man. Well, I guess that's what you're taking already. It might yeah. Be. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Gasio. Ooh, Gasio. Ooh, I am Gasio. Uh, what was it? The uh, the one with the Ben Stiller, where they all have all the the, the the superpowers, but they're all kind of loser guys. I don't remember. Ben Stiller's that. in it, and uh, I like Ben Stiller yeah. too. So uh, Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman, that was his power. Uh. The spleen, or something they call him. Mm. The spleen. I liked his character yeah. as Pee Wee Herman instead. Yeah. yeah. Well, it kind of is the same character right. except he. <laughs> he farted. He farted more. Just uh, don't go to the movies with him. You're watching <laughs> rawmikerichards.com. dot See I, that 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 yeah. weirded me. I yeah. I just yeah. We move on. <laughs> I mean, worry. couldn't you get just a don't. Sears catalog and, and and go in the bathroom like everybody else? Like, like Russell was telling me the other day, he uses Red Circle, which <laughs> interesting. Yeah, didn't, didn't see that one. Yeah, no, me neither. Yeah. Cosmo. <laughs> it's out there. You're watching uh, Raw Mike Richards uh, broadcasting today, DKI Studios. Of course, we're a little hindered by the connectivity, which is why you're watching this post live, uh, doing the best we can here. I do want to say that uh, in uh, Russell's world, there's no way that you're not excited about last night. Last night was that was that? I guess I was. Is it leaf porn? No, we have no Russ cam today, so we we'll just no have... Russ cam. But we do hear Russ um, on, ex- on the microphone. How exciting was that for you? It was something. Um, it wasn't a great <laughs> defensive good, good effort, down. but uh, it was definitely an exciting game for sure. Um, that, like, mm. I, I don't think they played particularly that well, but they got mm. the win, and that's two points on the board. So, mm. oh, there's your take from uh, that's, Russell. That's good. <laughs> you know what? The Leafs are really lucky. The Leafs are really lucky. Ryan Miller was in that. Because Ryan Miller sucks. I kind of forgot. Ryan what? Miller's terrible. You know what? I kind of forgot 
You know, so it's like, there's hell, Ryan Miller. I'm going, Ryan Miller? Yeah, but you know what? You know I, what you, I forgot. You know what you probably forgot? You forgot that Ryan Miller used to be good. Well, he was really good. Because Ryan Miller in a Ducks jersey stinks. Ryan Miller shouldn't be in the NHL after a performance like that. I mean, like, you know, if people sit there, not your father's Ryan Miller. Yeah, no kidding, he's not. Don't, then, Ryan Miller at one point. If you're thinking about the, you know the, the U.S. Team USA national program, he was the he, top. He was one. Yeah, he was their one. Yes, by no, it's far. A, so it was Jonathan Quick or who's 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 one now? Do you think? Uh, yeah, you know what? For Team USA, it's probably Jonathan Quick right yeah. now. Like if the if the Olympics start on Friday, by the way. If they were to Do they start, start on Friday? I'm not even. Yeah, I'm opening not even. ceremonies on Friday. There's an event on Thursday. Uh, watch Sportsnet and uh, the CBC. And uh, and if Team USA is sending their best players, Jonathan Quick is starting for Team USA in Game One. Absolutely, 100. percent Yeah, Ryan Miller was, uh, but he always had that little bit of that edge. Like in Buffalo, yep. There was that one guy that was trying to. Uh, he said, you know, but so when you play goal, like you know, when you, he started to describe what you did as a goal, and he goes. Ryan Miller says, "Oh yes, that's right. I'm. I'm are you telling that's me how to play goal? That's right. That's I'm so, right. See, I'm. I'm in the NHL. Yeah, I'm an NHL goaltender. <laughs> but you're telling me how I should have played a shot. Is that is that what yeah. I? And it was like, ooh. Yeah. My favorite Ryan Awkward. Miller memory. My favorite Ryan Miller memory is Sidney Crosby, the golden goal. That was a pretty good impression. Eh? Wow. It's Chris pretty, Cuthbert. Hey, <laughs> Cuthbert in the early days is it? Because but you're not imitating me, are you? Like you're not." Doing like when you do cold and all that. I said, my, I said, I said, the only guy I know who could imitate you is like Father Mulcahy <laughs> from Mash. <laughs> I said, I can't, I, I can't get my voice to go that high. Yeah, yeah, he, but I'll tell you, he's he's one of my favorites, like Chris uh, Cuthbert. He's one of the yeah, best that yeah. he does. Oh, he's ever. an awesome, awesome guy. Awesome but he does guy. have a little bit of a higher. Oh, I can't when... do that because I I love the Western. I still when he called the CFL like uh, you Henry know semifinal. Henry re- oh. punt return when he got excited about that. He, when he called a game, like I said, and of course we we know from time to time we play those older clips too. But uh, getting to uh, last night, Austin Matthews, yep. he, he was on a bit of a mission last night. Yeah, he was a little motivated. I I thought. Well, you know what? He didn't have Patrice Bergeron draped all over him and completely shut him down to nothing like he did on Saturday. Right? So once again, yeah. sort of the backhanded compliment. Well. The, Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Mike and Russell. Uh, well, he wasn't playing anyone good, so therefore, oh. If if the Boston Bruins meet up with the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round, which oh, if you're the Maple Leafs, you don't yeah, hope it. to God no. no. Patrice Bergeron is the best defensive forward in the NHL, and he will shut 34 down to nothing. Yeah, by by that definition, you know, when we talked about the the key elements, was it the 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 seven yes. or eight that yes. you, you must have. See that shutdown guy is that guy because oh, because when you play him it's a pain in the ass like, it's awful and he, he you know what he'll do it to anybody he'll do it to anybody oh, yeah, so it's, it's not like no. you know like like right now the way the Boston Bruins look and I know we're still going to talk some Maple Leafs here the way the Boston Bruins look right now is I'll be surprised and it's February sixth I'll be surprised if the Boston Bruins aren't in the Stanley Cup final. I'll be surprised right now if they continue to play like they have. And I'm not saying they have to win the next 15 straight or take points in 15 straight. But if they at least keep the same sort of style of play that they're doing for the next two months, if they keep on getting the great goaltending they're getting, I think they're the best team in the Eastern Conference, not just the Atlantic Division. They'll be in the Stanley Cup final because of what they have going for them. And they will bolster their attack as well. I'm not saying it's going to be a Rick Nash because Rick Nash is on the block right now. He is going somewhere. I think Rick Nash is probably a better fit in Nashville, but for my Winnipeg Jet case, I hope that doesn't happen. But nonetheless, the Boston Bruins will be there in the Stanley Cup final if they keep this up, Mike. Well, if you take a look at, you know, it's still a little early probably to tell exactly how this thing would play out. But if we're looking at playoffs right now yeah. and what, what you think will conceivably play out, do we see Tampa Bay holding on as a number one the rest of the way? I don't know. I don't. Think or does Boston do. take? I think they do. I, I know a lot of people sit there and say, you know, what, what's the spread right now? Five, six points, something like five that. Five points. Yeah, like that's not much. That's two and a half wins. So you know, you're going to get some head-to-head matchups, and you know, Boston does have a couple cupcake games coming up. I and know they got they, three games in hand right now. Three it, games in hand. It makes sense to me that the Boston Bruins will win that that. That division play the wild card team and then figure out what happens between Tor- Toronto and and, and Tampa, which Tom- would be a nice matchup actually. I'd like to see that just as far as offensive quality and star power on both sides. I'd like to see that. You've got ten, uh, as it sits right there uh, t- today, 
Tampa, after 53 games, has 75 points. Boston has 70 points, but only 50 games. Yep. Toronto's played 55 games. That's weird. 55 games with 67 points. Washington, 52 games and 65 points, so they're technically right now in fourth. New Jersey, do they hang around? They've got 62 points after 51 games. I think they do. I think they do, especially, uh, you know, I don't I don't know where, but I think the Metropolitan sends five teams to the postseason, so they're going to be one of those five. I just don't know where. I think New Jersey fits, in my eyes, more of a wild card than a top three in the Metro division, but uh, we'll see. Pittsburgh, 54 games. They have 61 points. And then current, like, I'm just reading it, uh, uh, conference all the way down. Columbus with 58 points, 52 games. And the Islanders, mm. 54 games, 58 points. So they might have a hard time sneaking in, too. They may have to do something, a uh, trade deadline as well, because you almost think that not only are they trying to service Jonathan, uh, John Tavares in the offseason, they have to make the postseason if Tavares is even going to consider going back to the island. I don't. I don't think John Tavares is going back to the Islanders. I, I think he doesn't like that situation there. And if this team doesn't make the playoffs, it gives them yet another reason to go elsewhere. I'm looking at those on the outside looking in right now. And sometimes you see teams that you go, okay, well, this I can see no one wanting to play these guys. But if I'm taking a look at it, where I'm seeing below the Islanders, you have the Flyers, the Panthers, the Rangers, the Hurricanes, Detroit. I see nothing but I don't garbage. see I don't see anyone making a run from that area. No. Nope. No one. No. Nope. Not going to be Montreal, not going to be Ottawa. Like it's it, it, I know there are those that that still talk about the Rangers. I just don't see, I think that the, the 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 core of that you, you can't, you know, Henrik Lundqvist, you, you can't blame him. I mean, guys get a little bit older than not, but I'm not blaming it necessarily on him either. I'm just saying overall they need a facelift. Yeah. Nice goalie, old goalie though, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we talk about we talk about joking about you know Ryan Miller isn't the same goalie. The King isn't the same goalie either. Cause it's, it's just it's, it's impossible that to be that good for that long. But I'm taking to me it will always and, and almost every year, almost seems every sport too. You got to talk about the West. You have to talk about the West. So Vegas after 52 games, 74 points. Then you got both Nashville and Winnipeg yep. with 71 points. St. Louis and Dallas. Both have played 54 games. They have, respectively, St. Louis 67, Dallas 66, San Jose, Los Angeles. It's still the heavyweight division, if you ask me. It Big still time. is in the West. Yep, I agree. I agree. It's going to be a nice fight, too, to the end. The only thing I don't like about that from a, from just a guy that watches a lot of Western Conference stuff, they tend to beat the crap out of each other. Sure, they do. That that's, what, that is very, very true. So by the time you get to it. Exactly. And yeah. when you get to it, you're sitting there going, oh, man, really? You know, it's uh, it's a it's a worn out team. So, we'll we'll see what happens. Here's from Joe. Good news. Uh, enough of Mike Richards in a Bucks jersey and David Bastel saying NHL instant replay sucks. Agree. You guys should splice crazy junkie adult hockey game stick over headbreaker and James Neal goal together. New segment: stick smashing heads. Interesting. No. Thanks, Joe. And <laughs> Shouldn't you be busy? Uh, don't, don't don't you have like a yeah, like a school of kids? Yeah, I, 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 I believe you have a job as opposed to us. That, <laughs> I gotta be honest, this hardly qualifies yeah, as a job. Yeah. Come uh, on, Joe. The other thing from last night, of course, uh, that we really don't know is uh, Frederick uh, Anderson. Yes, Frederick Anderson exactly gets, gets uh, kind of boot to the head. Yeah, it was it was interesting how they did that. So uh, I see that they asked uh, the head coach, and he. Uh, so far, I mean, do we know anything? Well, yesterday when they talked to Mike Babcock, uh, he he wasn't, uh, you know, he, he of course it, it's it's like that. Anytime you talk to a head coach after a game, he doesn't know, he hasn't talked to the right people. But that's why we are going to bring him on right now to talk to him, uh, and uh, we welcome Mike Babcock to Raw Mike Richards. Good morning, Coach. Uh, first question, of course, and you heard about it yesterday, so we'd like an update on your starting goaltender Frederick Anderson and whether or not he's going to be ready to go. Well, I gotta tell you, you know, I I talked to him uh, not that long ago, and uh, he seems like, uh, you know, he's uh, he's he, he seems good, you know, he's a good player, and uh, I think he wants to play. But uh, I'll be honest, uh, I thought it was on purpose. I thought it was a dirty play. Really? And uh, yeah, I, you know, it, it was a little bit of the like I like to call it the uh, the Kwai Chang. you know, the Kung Fu. Oh, is that is yeah, that really? Because I I've seen it at practice Kung Fu. 
and uh, I don't I don't like kung fu. Do you find it odd that Corey Perry would do it against a, a former teammate of his? Corey, uh, I don't know if I should say this or not because I'm trying to no, no, be respectful, but uh, yeah. he, he's a bastard. Oh, yeah. I did not know. Guess that. how I met him? Uh, how did you meet him? He was I uh, was in a kung fu class. <laughs> So he, yeah. so he was actually yeah. practicing some of his moves that we may have seen on the yeah. ice yesterday. It's called the, uh, it's called the uh, black grasshopper. Black it's, grasshopper. Yeah, that's what he done too, and he he's done it before. Hey, I've, I've also got to say congratulations to uh, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. Uh, Doug Peterson's a good friend of mine, and he is. He done a, a very good job with his players, and uh, Nick Foles uh, he did it the right way. I think uh, there's a lot for him, and. Uh, uh, I heard you talking about the celebrations, and uh, I always tell our, our car group, you know, I tell our group, you know, just show some dignity because uh, there was a player in Detroit. Uh, every time we won something, uh, he just went too far. And, he uh, did, eh? Yeah, yeah. Nick Lindstrom. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That's surprising. Nick, Nick, he did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what he used to do? No, what? He'd, he'd eat uh, pig shit. Really? Yeah, so I've seen it before, and it's not good. Hey, final question before yeah. you go, Coach. Uh, what happens if Curtis McElhaney is the long-term solution for this team? Do you guys have a chance? Uh, Curtis is uh, he's a hard worker. He comes uh, every day and, 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 and gives it. You know, He's going to give her. And uh, you've seen it last night, how good he can play. Uh, it's just uh, he's got a little weird thing about uh, – I don't, I don't want to say it, but – so, yes or no? He's a non-nude. Okay. So, when you take the showers, he didn't take his clothes off. He doesn't. No, no. Yeah, that's tough I said, is it because you got a big hog? He said, no, no, it's not. Oh, no. Interesting. No. We got a guy like that on the show named Russell Graham. Yeah, I don't like him either. No. Oh. No, stop calling me, too. Oh, okay. But uh, we're going to get it done. Look for Curtis, too. The, uh, the one thing I can say, he's going to play the next game. Okay. Yeah, he's he done it right. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Mike Babcock here on RawMikeRiches.com bringing us up to date. And I guess the update is, Mike, that, uh, you know what, they, uh, they're they still trying to figure things out. I'm happy for Curtis McElhinney because, uh, you know, that little bit of a Western tie there. Yeah. Excited about that. I just pray for decent hockey playoffs. And I think if you're, if you're the broadcaster and you're looking at what happened before, so how many Canadian teams are we saying for sure out? Montreal, Ottawa, out. Montreal, Ottawa, out. Vancouver, out. I hate to say it, Edmonton out. They can't have Calgary going out, too. I think the Calgary Flames are going to be in. I think the Jets are going to be in. The Toronto Maple Leafs are going to be in. So in the West, you only have two teams. Yeah. I think it's going to be three teams total. It's, uh, it's unless, a unless Brandon gets that expansion team that I think they deserve. One, one, one of the great times of year for me is the first round of the NHL playoffs, yep. especially if the weather breaks for you a little bit. You know how it's – it's kind of melting some of that snow. Hashtag barbecue. The barbecue comes out. You're going over to Dave's house, or we're going to uh, Russell's uh, tent, and uh, all of a sudden you're you got the game on. It's nice obviously tent. longer, longer days, a little brighter. I love that time of year. Yep. And you know what? Over the, it's funny. You know what that time means? Corn on the cob. Corn on the cob That's time. Corn yes. on the cob. It's fun. Hot dogs. When you think of the first round of the playoffs, hot dogs and it doesn't and even necessarily have to be your favorite team either. Yep. There's certain first round matchups that always look crazy to me. It looks like literally it should be the Stanley Cup final, even if the teams aren't aren't good enough to even go. But the atmosphere in the buildings when these teams play, I just really like it. You know, for one reason why it sticks out to me, hmm. if you see the Flyers and the Capitals play against each other, yep. it sticks in my head as for some reason the kind of first round where it they just they go out of their minds. I. I don't know what it is. Is it Philadelphia? Is it Philadelphia? Because I don't necessarily go wow the the Washington fans, but when Flyer fans are into it, mm. there is just something about that team getting in that I like. And I'm looking at this year, and I do they can they do it? I don't think they can. I don't think Brian Elliott's the answer over there in Philadelphia. I don't think he was anywhere to tell you the truth. But uh, uh, you know what? They might be the sixth best team in the Metropolitan Division, and that means they will not be making the postseason flyers will be a good team in the next couple of years because they do have a lot of nice pieces coming up through the system especially on defense but they have to hope that a guy like a carter hart who we saw with the junior program actually turns into a bona fide nhl goaltender because the the pipeline the flyers have in that system ooh, not good at goaltending but we've heard this a lot we haven't had a good flyer goaltender i'm going to go back and say ron hextall 
Yeah, <laughs> I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, honestly. If you're talking about someone who's actually been a yeah a season changer, yeah. not just a, a, a run or like a streak. They had, they had John Van Beesbrook there after the fact, and they thought they might be able to patch it up, and that simply didn't work. And they've had you know little sparks of a, a Roman Chechmanic that, that was good in and off of the season, and then he, and then he turned into a dumpster fire. But the Philadelphia goaltending, it's, it's almost like where people used to talk about the Arizona Cardinals quarterbacks go to die in arizona goaltending go to goes to die in philadelphia because yeah. that's what it just seems to happen it's strange that way yeah. so uh once again uh this is the abbreviated show without the connectivity but we'll try to uh, get out uh, to you at some point today but i can tell you that tomorrow uh, or so we're told yep uh things back to normal what we just become best friends yep yeah, that did happen. I did. You want to go do karate in the garage? Yup. It's time. Once again, we get back to normal. And, you know, my fingers are crossed because this is the time of year where you're leaning pretty heavy in this country on entertaining hockey. Mm-hmm. And so if the Leafs are going to play kind of a pond hockey 7-4, coaches hate it. <laughs> but the fans, the fans don't. But uh, trust me, I don't know how many games you're going to see that as the season gets closer to the end. There's college basketball. Of course, I'll be watching that because I have an illness Mm. and I can't stay away from it. But trust me, this is the time of year where I hope we get more. I'll be honest, I'm not hating the seven fours. So uh, join us tomorrow. Clips, an entire show, and something that we like to call the Internet. Ooh, I like that. It's going to be big.